वेलकम टू वील ऑन वील ऑन में आपका स्वागत है वी आर डिस्कसिंग इंटरनेशनल बैंकिंग ऑपरेशन एंड सर्विसेस सेशन नाइन अंडर द सब्जेक्ट बैंकिंग ऑपरेशन टॉपिक्स कवर्ड आर इंट्रोडक्शन इंटरनेशनल बैंकिंग reasons for engaging in international banking modes of international banking evaluation in international banking international debt crisis globalization of indian bank future of international banking strategies for globalization of indian banks when we talk about the concept of international banking it basically is the operations uh, that deals with the banking activities across the national frontiers across the national borders so uh, the modes of foreign banking operations they also provide uh, and they are also provided in order to accelerate the understanding of all the concepts when we talk about international banking international banking basically is an in process uh, whereby it involves the bank dealing with money and the credit between different countries across their political boundaries so it is also at times known as uh, offshore banking or foreign banking we can also understand that banking and international banking it takes care of all the activities uh, that crosses the national borders so it is concerned that the national and international movement of money and offerings of financial services through offshore branching or correspondence banking happens now what happens uh, international bankings they deal with all the banking transactions when we talk about and they could be private and government of two or more countries there could be reasons for engaging in international banking the banks they undertake outside operations or international operations in order to increase their revenue or profit base or in order to acquire resources from the foreign countries which would help in diversifying their activity they also start operating internationally because the commercial risk that could also be spread across several countries it also helps them in facilitation of the international business and trade further more economies of scope might become also possible and also there is a reduction in the cost of service delivery there is recognition and reputation also there are certain special uh, problems or constraints in international bankings which are not normally not experienced uh, when operating at home so the first problem first constraint that banking faces while they operate internationally is that the business activity they have to be transacted in foreign language and under foreign rules and regulations secondly there are information on foreign countries which needed by a particular bank wishing to operate internally may be difficult to obtain furthermore the control and communication systems they are normally very complex for foreign than for the domestic operations the risk level they might be higher in the foreign markets when dealing in the foreign market the foreign currency transaction becomes very important when we talk talk about the modes of international markets so there are various methods uh, uh, available for entry into the international markets 
they may include correspondent banks they also include includes uh, representative offices branches and agencies or subsidiary banks when we talk about correspondence bank so in order to adequately provide needed international banking services commercial banks they establish a network of foreign cor correspondent banks to supplement their own facilities worldwide so frequently what happened the expense of uh, establishing a related bank uh, uh, such as an overseas bank is not warranted due to the low volume of transaction which are concluded for the bank's international trade so therefore what happens to provide services with keeping cost to a minimal level the account relationships are developed with the foreign banks to facilitate international payment mechanism between the institution we also talk about representative offices so it is both a very commonly used and the most limited in function of all the foreign banking operations internationally so the international representative office functions mainly as a liaison between the correspondent bank and the parent bank now the representative office they are usually prohibited uh from engaging in general banking activities then come branches and agencies so depending upon the extent of service that the institution it wishes to offer the either a branch or an agency it may be established in the foreign country so the basic definition of branch and agency it is uh, found in the us international banking act therefore a branch is any office of a foreign bank at which deposits are received on the other hand agency is any office at which deposits may not be accepted from citizens or the residents of the us if they are not engaged in the international activities but at which credit balance may be maintained then comes limited branches so to carry on the international banking activity there is another means by which a foreign bank may participate in foreign ba banking market and it is called uh, as limited federal branch so here what happens this is an office which is chartered by the controller of the currency which is subject to the condition that the foreign bank it enter into an agreement with the country's apex bank or regulatory authority restricting the branch deposit taking activities to those permitted by the law then comes subsidiary banks or subsidiary branches so foreign banks they uh, gain control of subsidiary banks by establishing new institutions or by acquiring existing domestic banking institutions and these subsidiaries they generally engaged in full line of banking activities then comes bank acquisitions there are firms who are willing to gain access to international banking and they may also adopt the acquisition uh, approach by acquiring uh, domestic or indigenous banks so the acquisition process is however it is guided by very stringent conditions there is another situation which is referred to as bank merger so it is open to those who uh, wishes to provide international banking services in the foreign countries there are several reasons for a bank a foreign bank uh, merging with a domestic bank for example this would provide an expedient and an economical means of expanding into new market it also becomes easier to establish an identity on a state wide basis then comes evolution in the international banking
when we talk of evolution in the international banking there are recent events that uh, uh, include asian crises which have brought into greater focus the importance of establishing and improving the international standards there are financial regulators that have focused on increased transparency and on strengthening the prudential regulations and supervision in a manner that takes explicit account of the risk which are arising from the increasing glo globalization in banking now technology and regulations they have had a major impact on banking industry and they are the two most important changes to have occurred in the industry in fact technology has been one of the key drivers in the global banking scenario which is allowing new competitors all over the world to rapidly develop numerous e businesses to apply the rapid growth now there are new risk management techniques that have also come up uh, in the last few years uh, that have left the accord looking increasingly outdated now many banks uh, in the developed world they have developed advanced risk management system which they argue provide better valuation of the risk than the basel committee framework there is an impressive growth of internet banking and the brokerage service that has allowed globalization to reach the retail markets there is another important uh, recommendations of the accords which relate to the guidelines now the crm policy they should identify the measures monitor and control country risk operation so initially the banks will be allowed to adopt sovereign rating of international credit rating agencies but ultimately the banks will have to move over to internal assessment of the countries finally the banking sector is now entering a new world and the supervisory and the regulatory system it needs to adapt itself to the ever changing requirement so that they remain effective then comes international debt crisis now the debt crisis uh, in the year 1980s it has affected all the countries of the world so the international financial markets they were also severely affected when a number of developing countries they found that they were unable to meet the payment amounting to several hundred million dollars to major banks around the world now as countries trade with each other economies are integrated the stagnant economies in uh, europe and united states they had an inverse effect on many less developed economies now these countries they were highly dependent on their export business in these two economies now the strengthening of the dollar during the 80s they also adversely affect the debt problems of the lcds lcds when we say it is less developed countries and as most of the loans which were provided by the lcds they were dominated in the us dollar the international debt crisis it also reflected a combination of external shocks which included deterioration in the terms of trade and a sharp rise in the us dollar interest rate and domestic imbalances which could be large fiscal deficit and currency over valuation now there have been negotiations between the commercial banks lcds and the imfs which were held so in 83 itself 1983 the imf funding bill was passed to produce additional funding to those lcds that could meet specified economic goals now globalization of indian banking sector uh 
as per the guidelines which were issued for licensing of new banks in the private sector it was issued in 1993 so rbi they have granted license to pen banks and based on a review of experience uh, on the functioning of the new private sector i rbi they have issued the revised guideline the first one is that the initial minimum paid up capital shall be rupees 200 crores which will be raised to rupees 300 crores within the years uh 3 years of commencement of business then the promoter's contribution shall be minimum of 40% of the paid up capital of the bank at any point in time and their contribution of 40% should be locked in for a period of 5 years from the date of licensing of the bank the third is the initial capital other than the promoter's capital it could be raised through public issues or private placement then while taking care of all augmenting the capital to rupees 300 crores within a period of 3 years the promoters they need to bring in at least 40% of the fresh capital which will also be locked in for a period of 5 years then the nri participation in the primary equity of the new banks shall be up to maximum extent of 40% then nbfcs with a good track record they can become banks to specified criteria and a minimum capital adequacy ratio of 10% shall be maintained on a continuous basis from commencement of operations now the future of international banking when we talk about uh, the first is consolidation of banks it is a very crucial and a preparatory step to be undertaken by the banking sector in india then is the asset quality indian banks they should concentrate on asset quality and earning their firms the third is global player and customer satisfaction when we talk about global player and customer satisfaction so with more and more global players who are operating in india there is an urgent need to serve the customers promptly third is the competitiveness in banks when we talk about so uh domestic banks they should begin to meet them sales as very competitive as possible autonomy in hrm areas such as deciding categorization of branches or vacancies they should be given to the bank then efficient ca- capital market is required to be developed to channelize private savings into infrastructure financing then comes resource optimization so asset op- optimization they include unlocking money from real estate sector then comes customer experience now there are creations uh, which are uniform transaction experiences or developing appropriate delivery strategies in strengthening crms they are very key uh, requirements for a bank then comes strategies for globalization of indian banks so first is the cadre expert and they need to be build up because person should have exposure in functioning in a truly global environment then information te- technology uh, this is very important because uh, indian banks they are required to, to build their expertise and in basel to IT can explore new possibilities in the foreign countries then comes international capital market now approaching them or for trenches of capital subscription indian banks they should try to capture at a lower cost linkages with other financial organization indian banks they have linkages with the rest of finance infrastructure in india's right together they can face even of competition at a global level also 
then come acquisition of retail banks when we talk about acquisition they should be of retail banks in very selected markets now there is change in the mindset when we talk about change in the minds of the bankers they should uh, change their own mindset to win the customers in the countries then comes alliance with big houses they should have indian banks should have lot of alliances with profit making big houses and companies so that they can capture foreign market then come incentives now for indian banks they should provide incentives to the potential customers in the beginning to exercise explain the evolution in international trade and what are the strategies for globalization of indian banks thank you and have a nice day Keep learning and reading.